Please welcome Lena Spottleson. On July 26, 2006, my life changed. A month after being married, I felt it all stomach pain. I went to the doctor who ordered several tests, only to become up empty-handed in all of them. That doctor sent me to another doctor, who also performed a bunch of tests. Again, no luck. I went to doctor after doctor in search of what could possibly be the answer to my stomach pain. That day, July 26th, I walked into the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona, expecting the same. After several minutes of waiting in the office, a slender man walked into the room. I remember thinking how well-dressed and put together he was. I sat on the doctor's table, my husband on the bench next to me. The gentleman walked in, shook our hand, took a deep breath, and sat down in the chair in front of us. He had kind eyes, and I remember how sad they looked when he made eye contact with me. He said, Lena, you have cancer, and I'm going to show you why. He pulled up the images on the screen and began to mumble off a bunch of medical terms, talking about dark masses, but everything was so unclear after that. I don't remember what he said or how long he talked. I looked at my husband, who had tears coming down his cheeks, and me doing everything I could to hold it together, only to be dealt one more awful blow. Now, Lena, he said as gently as he possibly could, you won't be able to have children after this. And we need to get you into surgery right away. I couldn't hold it in any longer. I took a deep breath as tears began to trickle down my face as I scheduled my surgery. After nine months of no answers, I finally had one, cancer. A week later, I was in surgery. A surgery that was supposed to take only three hours went on and on as they te tested each part of my body. Once they found the cancer, they cut it up, took it out, one organ after another. First my uterus, top of my cervix, followed by my ovary, my gallbladder, my appendix, and lastly, a handful of lymph nodes down my left sides. Piece by piece, they took my insides. The next day, I remember being able to read my family's faces and knew they weren't telling me everything. The doctors came in to see me pretty early that day to discuss how surgery went and my, what my next steps were. They diagnosed me with stage four cancer and gave me a 25% chance of survival. I needed the most aggressive form of treatment if I had any shot at beating this. I started chemotherapy almost immediately as I recovered from my surgery. My hair didn't start falling out until about three weeks later. My husband and I wanted to go to Disneyland to celebrate our one-year anniversary. The doctors didn't want to let me go, and everyone told me it was a bad idea. But I was stubborn about going. I had received enough bad news, and I needed to make myself happy, and who isn't happy in Disneyland? I was sick, still nauseous, and weak as the chemo was working through my body. My husband and I drove out to Disneyland, only making a couple of stops to try to get me to the hotel to lie down as soon as possible. That night, my hair got worse. It was coming out more in handfuls at this point. I sent my husband the next morning to Target across the street from the hotel to buy some clippers to shave my head. And when he came back, we laid down newspaper on the hotel floor, and my husband, on our one-year anniversary, shaved my head. That last day of November, I became the sickest. I remember vomiting and not being able to control it. When I made it to the hospital, I walked up to the room that they had reserved for me and immediately began to have chest pain. The nurse laid me down on the bed, put a blood pressure cuff on, cuff on me. I glanced at the blood pressure monitor to see that my blood pressure was 40 over 20 before I blacked out. I had gone into septic shock. They put me on a ventilator in a drug-induced coma for four days. That night, they told my family that I wouldn't make it through the night. Everyone came down to see me. The ICU waiting room was filled with my family and friends, not knowing if I would make it out of there alive. Despite every blow that I had taken on this journey, every time cancer tried to knock me down, I was ready to take on even this. I walked out of the hospital on December 10, 2006. In January of 2007, I received my first clear scan. Treatment was finally over. I grew up wanting to be a teacher. I spent 11 years in the classroom before I made the very difficult decision to leave that profession that I love to help fight cancer for others. I work for the American Cancer Society, the number one funder of cancer research, only second to the federal government. And that's why I chose that. The things I want to talk to you about today is that as a 26-year-old newly married teacher, 
not knowing what was happening with my body. I kept going to doctors for answers. And they were sending me to other doctors and even one doctor told me it was in my head and they tried to prescribe me antidepressants. So what I want to encourage today is to get screened, to talk about fertility with your patients, because that was very important to me, and to listen to that 26-year-old patient that walks into your room. Thank you.